All right, so today we're going to be working on uh, putting in a curdy line drain on a slab foundation. You see, we already jackhammered out the slab, got it down where we needed to. Have this two inches, two inches, two inches deep. Yep. So we got it to the height we needed to get it to. And what I'm going to do is, is uh, we tightened the, the bottom screw on the no hub coupler. We got another screw right here, so I'm just going to try to tighten that guy up. Okay, so that's tight. Now that it's tight, I can kind of level it up. I can get mud where I need to get it under there. Okay, so it's really important to get get your slab ready for to adhere the deck mud when it's this thin. Uh, I want my my dry pack or my deck mud to be adhered to this concrete. The surface wet like this and just sprinkle dry cement or you can use pure Portland cement mixed real loose. That's what they used to use back in the day. But we always have thin set. It works really good. So I just like to pour it on. And then actually a brush works really good to, to get it where you need it to go. level up my drain. I do that by sticking the right amount of deck mud under there or dry pack. Those are interchangeable terms. Let's see, so I need to come up on this side, so I'm going to lift up here. Since I have room in the back, I'm going to put some back behind it and shove it under there too. It's not important to have the whole base of the drain supported. Here, if you were basically to stick this right on a flat subfloor, you would thin set here and then you would thin set the drain to the top to keep it in place. You see how this whole center part is unsupported? So I'm basically packing the mud here and here to give it the support it needs.
That's the nice thing about working with deck mud. I've said it time and time again, how much easier this is to work with than like a, a brick mortar. It's like building a sand castle. It's not, it's not messy. It's, it goes where you want it to go. It's a, it's like a four to five, four or five to one. So five parts sand, one part cement. And that's all it is. It's a little bit of water. It doesn't have a whole lot of water to it. Okay, so I'm gonna check my level here. Yeah, so check, go ahead and get a shot of that, Ronnie. So you want to get your you want to get your drain level nice and level. Okay. So after I have my level there, what I do is I want to get a nice level screed across the front of it where I start. Actually, I don't really need to do that. I'm gonna get that when I put. Okay. Why don't you go get me a couple more? Okay, keep your wood, wood floats clean, they'll be a lot easier to work with. Okay, um, so I'm basically going to set up two scree points right here for my three foot edge to work off of, coming back up this way. So, I like to get a nice level line right in front of the drain here. This was a pretty big hole, so I'm going to make sure I tamp this down pretty good. So I just screeded right off of that drain, which is level, so I should be able to put this here. It's a little high on that side, eh, barely. Tamp down there. There we go. So we're good. So if I'm straight across there, now I'll take just this point. So I got the concrete out here, which is my finish point. I'm gonna go down to the drain right there. Right there. There's one screed point. See the slope, Ron. Go ahead and get on there. You can see the slope here. That's it, a quarter inch per foot. See right there. I got a good half inch right there. Quarter inch per foot, and which means you got to get this drain the right height. So if this is three feet of fall, I'm gonna have three quarters from this point to this point. So we were careful when we were setting this drain to make sure this was three quarters of an inch lower than this point to get good fall going this way. So now that I have my two scree points, I can just take my edge and I can actually even just work it this way. Don't push too hard, just you just want to be kind of gentle with it. Pack your mud in along the way. But I have my two points here and here that I'm just kind of using as guides. And I'll go up high and then I'll come back, take a little bit off. And 
And if you don't have one of these box edges, you can just use a level or any other straight edge that you got. So I'll just fill it in. a tiny little trowel. They don't sell the five inch wide at Home Depot anymore, at least in my area. I like a five inch wide trowel, so I picked this guy up. Because I think Ronnie, oh yeah, Ronnie stole my five inch here. <laughs> but the five inch will do a lot of I erased the eyes off of it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's see. This is just a little area I'm kind of going to have to Take in a little bit. No, what I'll do here, watch what I'll do with this. This little area, I'm gonna tamp it down nice. Now I'm gonna take my two foot level. I'm gonna take this point and let's see. It's nice when you have an edge to screed off like that. That's really nice. So that's the rough, rough part of the float. I like to use this guy. This is my foam float, and I'll kind of fill in any voids, any, any little imperfections I see. I'll fill them in. Tamp it down, and then just start working it.
clean trowels. Just use another trowel. Don't want to break your back. What this does, this just gives it a really nice finish. ready to be waterproof tomorrow right again um, some instances you can just put that foam down and go right over it but 90% of the time in our work we're either dealing with slabs or we'll, we're dealing with wood foundations that are all over the place you know patches things like that where you know we, we hardly ever have perfectly flat plywood to go over so we're usually floating. I'd say 9 out of 10. I'll use the foam if I can, but we're, we usually just count on floating. One hour, um, the deck, mud, deck mud's 5 bucks a bag, so 15 bucks a material. Anyways, hope you got something out of this video. Uh, click like, subscribe. Yeah, share this video with someone who you think could use it. All right, peace, guys. Talk to you soon. Stay tuned. In an upcoming episode, I'm going to reveal my new waterproofing system that's been combining... Schluter Curdy with another product that I'm really excited about. This way I know for sure that any seams are completely waterproofed and not solely relying on an unmodified thin set for waterproofing. Again, click like and subscribe and share this video with someone who you think could use it. Keep up the great work guys. See you on the next one.